What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we're here today with a review for The Shy. So how I'm going to do this is you guys will begin tonight The Shy, Royal Housewives of Potomac and Marriage to Medicine Reunion and then tomorrow will be Power Book 3, Raised in Canaan as well as um, Baddies ATL. So this is The Shy, Season 4, Episode 8. The episode was titled Love Jones, you guys. And do we have? I think we have two more episodes left of this season, right? Let me know in the comment section below. Now, before we get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other other videos on the channel and not already subscribed, why are we still going out on this date and you're not subscribed to the channel and me paying for the date? So hit that subscribe button, you guys. Hit the notification bell button. Hit all the buttons on the channel. And without further ado, you guys, let's talk about this episode, shall we? All right, you guys. So um, we're going to start this episode up and we're going to talk about Emmett and we're going to talk about Tiffany, right? So we see Emmett and he's texting someone and about he, he's texting somebody while he's watching Love Jones on, on TV, right? Now, when he initially sent the text message, I thought he was talking to Tiffany, but no, Emmett was actually talking to Keisha. So they watch it and it, and it gets to their favorite part. And then, you know, he asked Keisha, how is she doing? And, you know, Keisha tells him that she's just really stressed out, right? And he says, well, if you, you know, if you need to talk, you know, definitely feel like you can come to me. So then he texts Tiffany asking Tiffany where she is, right? So then later in the episode, we see him and he calls Tiffany and Tiffany is drunk and she's also with Dante. And, you know, he tells her to come home. Tiffany's like, I'll see you tomorrow. He's like, Tiffany, bring your ass home. And Dante's like, you know what? I can drop you off. And he's like, dude, if you drop her off, I'm going to body rock your ass and steal your gold chains. So he says, Tiffany, come home. She's, she says, Emmett, I'm too drunk to drive. That's why he said, um... That's why he said he'll drop her off. So, um, what was I? Where was I? That's when he told Dante he'll whoop his ass. So then he tells her to get into a lift. She says, no, she'll see him in the morning. So then he says to her, well, I'll come pick you up. Once again, she says, no, right? So then the next morning we see Emmett and Emmett is making breakfast for Tiffany, you know, to deal with that, you know, combat that hangover. And then she's like, why are you making breakfast with no shirt on? He says, well, I got hungry. You weren't here. I got up and I made breakfast, right? So then, because she says, you usually ask me to cook breakfast. He said, but that's because you weren't here. So, you know, he tells her, go take a shower, go do this, you know, let this, let the water do this, let this, let this, let this, let everything soak up the alcohol, basically. So then we see Emmett and Emmett is at work, right? And he has Kevin and Kevin is sitting in front of him and he's asking Kevin, has he saw Papa? And, and you know, Kevin's like, I haven't saw Papa. He's like, what do you need Papa for? He was like, you know, I'm having woman issues. And Kevin said the thing that I was thinking, you have a woman issues. Why are you coming to a teenager to ask him for advice about your woman? I was confused on that one as well. So then Kevin told uh, Emmett that Emmett, that Papa's having issues with Maisha, right? And Papa does come in and Papa's like, what's this? He's like, you know, the food is for you. He's like, I already eat it for free. What do you, what, what's, what's up? So then he asked for advice. He asked him for advice. But we find out that um, we found out from Papa that he has a plan that he wants to surprise Maisha, and he tells Kevin that he needs his help. Right? These kids are really grown. <laughs> I mean, these kids are really, really grown, right? So, I, so in the next scene, in the next scene, I'm talking about with Emmett. I'm just gonna assume Emmett has absolutely no friends his age, no friends whatsoever, right? Because Emmett, um is talking to Trig because Trig came down to the, you know, to Smokey's to get something to eat. And that's when he's going off telling, you know, telling him about his issues with Tiffany once again and the fact that they have an open marriage. And it's not, you know, him having an open marriage with Tiffany is technically not what he was expecting. And, um, you know, he's talking about, the, and I, I realize I'm like, so Emmett is jealous of Dante because Dante has money and Dante can do material things for Tiffany. But Kind of like what Trig said, you know, forget the money, do stuff for her that'll hit her in the heart, right? So then we see Emmett, he goes home and he's acting out the scene from Love Jones with Tim, Tiffany. She's like, nigga, what are you doing? And then she figures that out. Oh, this is Love Jones. So they, they reenact that whole scene, right? So then we later see them and as they're getting ready to go out and they're in character. They're, at, they're playing as Darius and Nina, right? So then we see Tiffany and Emmett, they end up at a comedy club when she thought they were actually going bowling, he's like, but you just got your nails done. 
And then she says, well, you know, next week, can we reenact Basketball Wives? Oops. <laughs> Not Basketball Wives, Love and Basketball. How did I get Basketball Wives? So then the comic on stage, he notices a lot of couples in the in, in audience. Like, I wonder why, why would y'all bring your woman to see me? And then he started going in on Tiffany and Emmett, right? He was talking about how, you know, his ex-wives, they were fucking other guys. Then after, you know, he meant, he mentioned to Tiffany, like, you want to, you know, after this, you want to link up. Emmett was like, she does not want to link up with you. So then we see Emmett and Tiffany. We later see them. They're out dancing, right? And Tiffany is thanking Emmett for the night that they've had together. So then they're walking by where they first met at. And Emmett gets down on his knees and he, you know, he was, he's getting ready to propose. And Tiffany was like, we're already married. He says, I want to upgrade your ring. And also with him upgrading her ring, he wants to end the open marriage. At this point, he does not want to be in an open marriage. He wants just to be him and Tiffany. But Tiffany's like, I kind of like what we have right now. And I don't want you out there fucking other females. He's like, that's it. I'm done with that. Which I actually believe him. She says, but she want, but like I said, Tiffany wants the marriage to stay open. So Emma tells her, well, if you want to stay, if you want the marriage to stay open, I can't stay married to you. I was like, oh, wow. Not the ultimatum. Ooh, that was an interesting one. I, I kind of saw that coming, but uh, wow. I figured it was coming because of the situation with Dante, him being jealous of Dante. But let's move on. All right, guys, I want to talk about Keisha real quick because I thought Keisha's storyline in this episode was cute and sweet. So we see Keisha. So Keisha's at work. Do we know the name of the guy? I mean, do we know the name of the guy that she's dating? I don't think we've gotten his name. So I keep calling him I'm like, until I know what his name is. His name is New Guy. So New Guy came up to Keisha. And he was talking to her, right? He asked her, like, how was the baby? She says the baby is good, but she's not getting much sleep. And he's talking about, you know, a lack of sleep can lead to sleep deprivation. And you can be delirious and stuff like that. So then he asked Keisha, you know, to go out, saying that she looked like she could use a break. And Keisha agrees to go out with him, right? So then we see Keisha later on in the episode. She notices that new guy is talking to this girl. And once, you know, the, the girl leaves, you know, he gives her a hug and she asks him, who was that? He says, oh, that's just a, a homie of mine from when I was in middle school. She's like, did y'all date? He says, yes, but we dated before we were 18. So anything before 18 doesn't really count. And it's someone like he said, he's known since middle school. And he tells Keisha, like, Keisha, trust me. I'm not trying to hurt you. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, could he be too good to be true? Like, he seems like a good guy, but I was just like, does he, he's part, I'm like, I don't know how old he is. Like, he's got to be between 17 and 18, or at least 18. And I'm just like, hmm, I don't know too many 18 year olds like him. So let me see Keisha. So Keisha is looking, she's with the baby and she's looking through his social media. She's looking at his photos, his likes and all that stuff. And so she then calls him and he answers on the first ring. She's like, wow, you answer on the first ring. He's like, yeah, you know, I don't want it to look like, you know, I don't want it to give a bad impression. Like I'm interested in you and I don't want it to look like I'm not interested in you. So then he asked her on a date and she agrees. She asks him, so where are we going? He says, it'll be a surprise. She's like, I don't like surprises. He says, well, okay, I'll tell you where we're going. She's like, no, no, you know what? Never mind. Let's let it be a surprise. So then we see new guy in Keisha. So he goes to pick up for the date and he's on a motorcycle. And Keisha was like, uh, she was reluctant to get on the motorcycle. He wants, and the, the thing with him in this episode was, trust me, trust me. He said that, more, he said that so many times in this episode to Keisha, trust me. First, like I said, it was, it was with the girl at the, at the store. Trust me. The bike. Trust me. So, and even in my notes, I said, I hope he is not too good to be true. Because, like I said, he seems like a good guy, but I just hope he's not too good to be true. So, then we see Keisha and a new guy. They went to a record store, actually. Which, I don't know why, where I missed how I missed that. But they went to a record store. I might, may not have put that down. They went to a record store. And they had a good time at the record store. Now, I did notice in the background that it looked like the girl that she asked him about earlier was in that in that same in that record store. So I, I don't know anything. I, I didn't. They didn't put too much emphasis on that. So then we see them later in the episode, and they're at a spoken word, right? And um, I I don't know if Keisha may have went to the bathroom or something. He came back, and she was like, you know, she asked him who was he texting. He said his roommate. 
And then, you know, um, she says, I trust you. So at this point, we realize Keisha's guard is starting to come down completely. You know, I hate this. If you like booty, uh, how did this person, how did these spam get my number? If you like booty, hit this, um, it says, if you like booty, question mark, HTT, the, um, semicolon, backslash, backslash, J, like, how did I get my, and it's got 20 other people attached to a trash. Yes. And I block them all the time. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know if somebody has, you know, what the person has had this phone number before me. She still gives her, this number out to people. I got to change this number soon. Um, so then throughout the spoken word, Keisha had a panic attack, right? So new guy followed Keisha outside and he was a complete gentleman. He asked Keisha, he asked her, was she okay? And then he asked her, could I hug her? Can I hug you? And she said, okay. I was like, okay. So then we later see them at I don't know if it was his place or whose place, but we saw them at someone's place as they were listening to music and they were dancing and Keisha allowed him to, you know, hold her hand and dance. I'm like, oh, this is so cute. And then we later saw them in, at the end of the episode, he, you know, it started raining and he, I guess he took her home and he kissed her. I was like, oh, that is so sweet. I loved it. I love that whole story, this whole episode for Keisha. I've wanted something. I just want. I've just wanted good for Keisha since what happened to her last season. But let's move on, you guys. I wrap the episode up. All right, you guys. Let's talk about these grown ass kids. So where are we gonna start at? So we see Kevin in the episode, and Kevin is calling Lene, bugging Lene, basically, looking thirsty, asking B. And Keisha comes in, and Keisha tells him like, "Kev, chill out, like." What are you doing? He says he wants to get out of the friend zone. And she said the best way to get out the friend zone is to fall back. The best way to get out the friend zone is not to call her and leave her multiple voicemails because the way Kevin, because Kevin was like, you know, I don't know if you got the last voicemail. So I'm like, damn, how many voicemails have you left, Kevin? It's cool to show the girl that you're interested in her, but what you're doing, it looks a little bit stalkerish, my little friend. Got to be honest with you, right? So then we see Papa. So Papa, he is at Sonny's. He's looking at photos of Myesha. He's talking to Jake about how good she looks. And then Jake looked at the photo. She's like, oh, she do look good. And Papa tells him like, dude, you are simple. I'm like, finally, someone told Jake he's a simple ass nigga. So then he also notices some hate in Myesha's comments, right? And Jake tells him that you should reach out to her. And Papa like, you know, you been with um, Gemma, although I don't, you know, necessarily 100% agree with it. She's doing some good. She's rubbing off good on you. I don't know about that. So then we see Papa. So Papa went over to check on Maisha, right? So Papa gives Maisha some encouraging words because, you know, Maisha is down at this point about the comments that are in her, you know, the negative comments that she's getting. Whew. Being on YouTube, I kind of understand where Maisha's coming from because I've definitely got some, I've definitely gotten some negative comments, but I don't let them, I don't let them keep me, I don't let them keep me down. I just look at the comments and move on with my life. And I think that's what Maisha needs to do. But Maisha is a teenager, so I can understand what she I can understand that she's a teenager. She's gonna feel some type of way. Um Papa tells her he misses her, and she says, But Papa, I still need my space, right? So then we see Jake and Trig, right? So Jake is customizing something that he won't get. I guess it was a car. I didn't see it. I don't understand what they were talking about. And he tells Trig, like, hey man, y'all don't kill my dreams. He said, I wouldn't if you had some sort of income. And Jake was like, but you wanted me to focus on school. And Trey was like, I did want you to focus on school, but with you bringing in them C's, it doesn't really look like you're focusing on school at this point. So then, um, you know, he's talking to him about Kevin and about how he needs to do right by Kevin. And he was like, what about you and um, oh boy? What was old boy's name, you guys? Shad. He was like, you know, Shad was disrespectful to Imani. He was like, but that's your boy. He was like, yeah. And then, you know, so he says, but so you sitting here lecturing me about shit that you ain't even taking your own advice about, right? So where are we at? So Trick says, okay, you know what? I'll talk to Shad if you talk to Kevin. And they agree on that one, right? So then we see Kevin. So Kevin pulled up on Maisha because, like I said earlier, um, 
Je Papa told him that he needed his help, right? So Maisha says, did Papa send you? He says, no. She says, I was with you. I know when you're lying. He says, okay, he did send me. So then, you know, um, he said something else where she said, come on in. So then Kevin tells her, you know, how proud of her he is. And, you know, um, she says, basically, you know, I've been this shit. I know that. You know, but the thing is for her now is the fact that, you know, she's at the forefront and people were used to her being the goofy, you know, the, the big goofy friend, so to speak. And I guess people can't handle that. And then also the negative comments that she, you know, she's getting. And he tells her to come to a party. And, you know, she tells him, like, you know, when it comes to me, I'm pop. Like, I wasn't trying to overshadow Papa. But at the same time, I'm not going to downplay myself to make him feel good. You stand on your shit, Maisha. So then we see Kevin. Kevin found Gemma. And he tells her he loves her and that he will continue to fight for her. And, oh, my God. Gemma. Annoying. She's talking about, this is harassment, Kevin. This is harassment. You know, when men say... That, you know, I'm not going to give up on you. I mean, technically, is that considered harassment, you guys? I mean, I guess, it, I mean, it could get to the point, right? If the person tells you no, 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 and you keep telling them I'm not going to stop fighting for you. It could get to that point where it's, um, you know, it could get to that point. But I'm sorry, Jim just gets on my damn nerves. So then he asks her to come to Papa's party after, you know, she, she tells him she loves him, right? And she tells him no, and I'm no one's accessory. Whatever, little girl. So then we see Papa. He asks, um, you know, Kevin, how do things go with Gemma? He says, you know what? Maybe I should have listened when she said no to a relationship. Absolutely, Kevin. Please listen to her. And Papa says, am I doing the right thing by having this party for Maisha? And Kevin says, you know what? With this party, just make sure it's lit. And, you know, just make sure she has a good time, right? Oh, so there it is. So then we see Maisha, she shows up to the party. Now, mind you, when she got to the party, nobody was in there, but it was a whole hell of a lot of fog in there. And, you know, um, we see Kevin. Kevin is down and look like he's moping. He's hoping he's down and hoping that Jim is coming, right? And then um, we see Papa and Maisha, they're dancing with each other and they're talking. And then, you know, Papa stop, you know, Papa goes and checks on Kevin. I might have went out of order with that one. I just thought about that one. So then they notice when Kevin is talking to Papa that there's another guy dancing with Maisha. Papa goes and talks to that guy and like, hey, you dance with my lady. And Maisha's like, Papa, I'm not your lady. You know, if you, you invite me to the party, you want me to have fun, right? Well, let me do that. So then, you know, Pop, Jake, not Jake, but Kevin sees Jake and Gemma, right? So then he notices there's another little girl. So he goes and dances with that girl. Meanwhile, meanwhile, while he's dancing with that girl, Gemma can't stop looking at um, uh, him. And Jake was like, why you keep looking at Kevin? She's like, I'm not looking at him. I'm like, girl, yes, you are. Like, you are staring them down. Now, Maisha, I, I love me some Maisha because Maisha went up to Gemma and says, girl, I always knew you wasn't shit. And Jim was like, what are you talking about? She says, she asked her, when, um, why do you have Jake and Kevin fighting over She says, I don't have them fighting over me. She says, but you didn't make them, you didn't stop it. That's the issue. You didn't stop it. And you definitely didn't make a decision. She says, I did make a decision. No, you didn't. Because if you made a decision, you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have been, you know, staring a hole into that girl and, um, and Kevin. So then Jake finally goes and apologizes to Kevin. I'm like, it's about goddamn time. And Kevin says, you know, with him and Jim, it just, he just wants her to be happy. Better than me. I would have beat his ass once again. So then we see Pop and Maisha, they talk, and she thanks him for the party. And she basically tells him that for her, although, you know, he's giving her the compliments and everyone else can, you know, gives her compliments, she doesn't really see, it. you know, she doesn't feel it for herself. And I'm like, oh, she, so she has a little bit of a self-confidence issue. But it's something that she can work on. So then Gemma goes up to, um, to Kevin. At this point, I'm tired of Gemma. She, Gemma is playing games. You're with Jake, but you're telling Kevin that you got jealous of him dancing with the girl, and he said that he's jealous of you with Jake, which that one is understandable, but I'm tired of Gemma. Honestly, God, I'm over Gemma. Gemma's annoying everything in the book. Um, that's the episode, you guys. It was a good episode. I think, what, we got two more episodes left, you guys? I think it's two. 
because this was episode eight. So I think we got nine and ten. I think we got nine and ten. But yeah, that's it, you guys. Be sure to like the video. Please leave your comments in the comment section below and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are notified when I drop new videos. Share the video. Until the next one, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear a mask or not, whichever one you guys do decide to do. Be safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. If this will turn off.